uh, webinar. I'm very excited to introduce Jill McGuckin to everybody. She is our PR expert, and she has a She's based in Austin, Texas, and she has uh, 20 years of uh, experience in uh, running her very, very successful PR company. Some of her, her um, services that she can do for you, by the way, if, if you need some help on anything, is artist development, uh, event coordinating, publicity, you know, consulting for print, broadcasting, elect, you know, electronic media publicity. Although, if you need consulting for print, I would suggest you talk talk to me on that one. <laughs> Anyways, uh, if you uh, if you do need any help in PR, Joe is very experienced. She's very well known here in Austin, and we're very happy to have her on our team. So I'll let her take it from here, and hopefully we'll all learn a lot from her. Thanks a lot. Hello, everyone, and thank you for sharing this next hour with me. I am an entertainment publicist based in Austin, Texas, and I'm going to use information that I refer to to give you the ABCs of public relations identifying goals, targets, and messaging. And why is that important? Well, in today's corporate business, um, it's more competitive than ever. Countless companies clamoring for the attention of audiences and cu customers. To be successful, companies now have to devote more time and energy to their business strategies. And I believe one of the most powerful tools for getting ahead in the business world is publicity. But what is publicity? Basically, it's the process of getting the word out to the public, letting as many people as possible find out what your company, who is your company, and what it, what it does. And at the same time, creating an attractive and sellable public image. This means getting magazine articles written about your company, getting newspaper reviews of product release, live interviews on local radio programs, holding press parties, getting your peer or your CEO picture picture in the paper, appearing on talk television, becoming first in your local community, which I think is very important over a larger region, and finally across the nation and around the world. So today we're going to talk about the ABCs of public relations and I'm going to give you some information about how we can identify our goals, targets, and messaging. The best way to reach the public is through the media. And, of course, all of you are publishers, and on your editorial side, many of you are your editorial departments for many solicitations from companies and publicists wanting in your magazines. So we all know that the best way to reach the public is through the media, through newspapers, magazines, radio, and television that people watch every day. What it takes to get a company on the air or in print whether it's local media or national media. We're going to know what media people look for when they scout for stories, and publicity provides a vital source to an industry hungry for, the new, for new material to print or broadcast. And, of course, that's what they are looking for is content at all times. We can say Public relations is the creation of media plans and campaigns to break news, form public opinion, promote image with branding and messaging, launch projects, and many more areas. So I'll give you a publicity over, overview. How does a company go about selling through? Well, we all know that in the magazine business and in the corporate world, it takes talent, staffing, it takes skill, people that know what they're doing. It takes luck and word of mouth. They're all crucial, but they're not enough today because everything's moving so fast in the business world. Media exposure or carefully planned and executed public relations plays an important role. These days, a company or a magazine must have an intelligent plan for getting media coverage Therefore, you're increasing your profile in the marketplace. And I'm talking to you more about more just hype 
and as a professional publicist and in the creation of publicity material, low on adjectives and high on facts. Because we all know that hype is a attention-grabbing strategies and abnormally inflated language that will use to boost a company's exposure to media. But publicity is much different in today's world. It involves so much more than hype. Publications, PR, and publicity is a serious business. It has very real stakes, and it has its own set of professional requirements. Next few months, we'll be talking about the different areas of these requirements and how they and how to tailor them for your own campaigns and your company. The, I mentioned the techniques and tools of gaining attention in the media have some very concrete shapes and can be presented in terms of recommended procedures and guidelines. Let's look again at the business of attracting attention. Publications, publicity, public information, press relations, or PR, they all mean the same thing. Many people are very confused. Let's look at it as the professional management of a company's media exposure, the process of working with mass media to bring a company to the public's attention. Well, why is it important? Why is it important to be in the attention of the public? Well-conceived and well-executed PR plans is a valuable and integral part of a company's business strategies. Really, publicity and recognition are vital, and there's a number of reasons. With data competition in business, it exists in every aspect of business, in the publishing business, in the entertainment business, in the corporate world. The competition is so stiff for radio airtime, TV slots, and the public's purchase dollar for magazines, products, and anything that a company would be selling as far as services. A founded PR approach is a, can be a tremendous help in cutting a path through the competition. Exposure in print and radio, TV, and now the Internet, which we know is so important, favorably position a company and thus enhance sales. Any publicity can boost the volume or provide information that may incline others to buy ads, to magazine, to buy product. We're looking at recognition of brand. It's a key element here. By having your brand, your company's name, your brand appear in the media you're building up a psychological imprint of recognition, and it, you're, it's making the media, fam, the public, familiar with your company. If you're an established company. It also is important to your longevity. Viewpoints and insights provided by feature coverage in newspapers, magazines, and TV talk shows appearances are important. Thing information about your company's services. And its social and political outlook can be immense interest to the public and lead to a decision to buy and or advertise. For an established company, professional PR serves a different function, a different purpose. Many times it's used to control information and release information in a way that's favorable to the company's image. And we've seen recently with Tiger Woods and now the oil bill and the golf that the creating and releasing of information and the building of information about why different things happen are very important. People go forward quickly and give explanation and support, and some don't use their publicity wisely, and it really can uh, turn the public attention against them. So it's very important that you get your viewpoints and insights out, and it's um, and talk about how it's how publicity how where those places are placed, where the publicity would be placed in trade journals and technical publications. It offers a vehicle through which companies can reach their market. 
important factor is the volume of business and industry positioning. And you get that publicity in the trade magazines, when you get on TV or, or radio, you're giving your company a great positioning and it helps the word out and it really will exploit your company's success. For instance, a company may decide to get involved in a big charity cause purely for goodwill purposes. And it could be costly, but the results, when it's properly exposed to media, can manifest them in the most subtle ways where the public has a good feeling about your magazine or company. So it may be more psychologically inclined to buy your company's product or your magazine. It's that feel good fuzzy, warm, warm feeling. So let's just over, look, have an overlook now what publicity does. As I mentioned, PR is the business of image. It's framed that image in the collective mind of the public. And we have several processes that we go through so that we can successfully frame that image. For one thing, let's look at do some extensive research to find out what profile your company has. How is your magazine perceived by the public? Then we want to strategize how that image can be sharpened, verified, and or amplified. So you might grow your image. You may be seen as one giving as one source of information, but there might be additional areas or avenues of information that will grow your company's image and will clarify exactly what your company or your magazine is offering. Once we've, do, we've uh, done the research, we've strategized about how we can sharpen, clarify, or amplify, then you draw up a specific plan detailing how the company can be packaged, illuminated, and made attractive to the mass media. Once we've put those steps together, which would be the research and development phase, we need to look at the day-to-day -day work or managing the company's image, developing publicity materials, and using communication tools. And these are areas that we will, I will be talking about in the next few months, um, particularly developing materials and using our communication tools. But today we're going to just look at, again, at what publicity does, and let's look at our PR goal. What is a PR goal? To transform the company into an entity that's accessible, interesting, result in added coverage through various components of the mass media. And it can be really eye-popping. An interview on Oprah, a Good Morning America, uh, coverage on a new um, issue launch that has a specific theme that mass public would be in, uh, interested in. It would be stories, product reviews, headlines, and radio television exposure from coast to coast. That could be just incredible results from a national campaign that's executed correctly. Let's look at the impact of publicity once it's been placed in the media. Okay, the publicity is placed, the coverage is there, the TV interviews happen, um, or it hit in print media, and then your interesting the public becomes more interested in maybe your company's smokes, spokesperson as an expert. You can establish your CEO or your company's president as, a, as an expert, and the media is looking for experts to support stories that they're writing or what they're following in the media. They want people to give expert opinions. Of course, publicity can sell products and services. Publicity can educate. It can not only educate about your company or your publication, but it can also the content of your issues and what your company is about. That's the education you want the public to know about your your core business. Public can shape public opinion, and we know that. We see it so often. Um, this publicity can provide credit that opens, credibility that opens doors. 
someone reads about your magazine or your magazine or your company or some special uh, that you're aligned with, that might open doors to additional coverage, more depth information about your alignment with a your comp- alignment of your company in the business that you do. Touch on something right now because there's always so much confusion about publicity and advertising and the publicist. Many times I'm asked, "Oh, you're advertising," and I want to look at that for a moment with with you today because you are in the business that you sell ads, and I want the difference between advertising and publicity because there is a big difference. And for a small company or for a magazine, um, it can have significant impact on your budget and overall success. So let's look at what publicity is. Let's find it as a subcategory of public relations. And the RSA of America, the Public Relations Society of America defines public relations as the management function that uses communications in a way that helps an organization and its publics adapt mutually to each other. <clears throat> Publicity is the media relations arm of public relations, the function that gets a company's name in the news. Advertising Advertising is a subcategory of marketing. Marketing is the function specifically involved in the sales of a company's products and services. Advertising is a paid form of communicating a message through the various media. Differences here. Okay, a company buys advertising, publicity is free. A company can control advertising because you buy it. You know where it will appear in the media, when it will appear, and what it will look like. Nobody can control publicity. <clears throat> You're never sure. You never know for sure when an article or interview will be used by the media. You really can't even control in what context the information you provide will be used. And this has happened to me and my clients, um, even when TV cameras show up at a special event or a press conference or the opening of a restaurant, doesn't mean the coverage will run because it's possible that a bigger news story that will keep yours from making it on the air that night will be run instead will run instead of the one they came and recorded at your event. And in Austin, we laugh because we're only a big town, not a big city. We say here a car wreck on, on our state, I-35, can override any big story that the media is coming covered from um, from an editorial standpoint. But the hard news will always override. Um, but on the other hand, there's a reason that publicity is important. And I want you to remember this. Publicity is very important. It really has more more influential than advertising. Um, studies at the Harvard Business School estimate that a new item that refers to a product, company, or service is worth 10 times more than, that than the advertising cost of ad space or ad or airtime. Keep that. A news item that refers to a product, company, or service is worth 10 times more than the advertising cost of an of ad space or airtime, that extra value, that additional credibility that your editorial departments give when they cover products, companies, or services uh, is very value valuable because it's an implied editorial endorsement of the media, of the press. And the public, when they read in the newspaper or magazines about product launches, news stories, features, they trust the media and they trust that editorial endorsement and it gives them more of a, um, it, it makes a deeper penetration into the, their um, beliefs and how it changes the image of that company. It draws more attention to the company. 
So this chart that I have highlighted here it goes over the key differences between advertising and publicity, in terms of where a company's information appears, the end result of the information, and which information has the most credibility. So we, as I said advertising, you control where it goes, yes. You control when it runs, yes. You control the end results, yes. It has the most credibility, no. Publicity, you don't control where it's going to run. You don't control when it's going to run. You control the end results has the most credibility. The free publicity, that's what we said, free versus paid. Not really, there's always going to be a cost involved in publicity. For one thing, just the time that staff spends on generating publicity has a value. There's always expenses. If you choose to do special events, they can be costly, but effective. And uh, can generate a lot of publicity for small businesses and for magazines. And we will talk about event publicity as part of in the next few months. And, of course, there's always a cost, too, to produce and mail publicity materials. If you choose to use an outside public relations firm, that isn't free either, or as what I am, a, a publicity consultant, there will be a fee for service. Look at the word free publicity. The word free is refers to the fact that the company didn't pay the media to use its news and information. Cases, the rewards of a carefully crafted publicity campaign outweighs the cost. When we look at the response by the public, could be ten times that of a paid ad. And you might ask yourself, you may have in the past, why is your why why are your competition's always in the news? Why that magazine mentioned? Why is that company always being interviewed? Uh, and I believe businesses that emphasize publicity and their public relations mix will always be featured in the media more than those that don't. Because they use publicity tools wisely and consistency, consistently, they get more exposure. Okay, let's say one. The company or the ma magazine does something newsworthy or offers information that is useful. Two, it in turn shares this news with the media. And it could be an, uh, a special award. It could be a special project that is that you're doing for a nonprofit or or around an event. Then the company packages this news in the proper format. And as I mentioned earlier, there are very uh, concrete tools and techniques that are accepted by media. So we will be talking um, to webinars about what that proper formatting is. You research the company delivers its news to the right editors, reporters, and producers. So you know who's interested in your company. You know who's going to be interested in what you have to share. You're going, you know who's going to consider your information newsworthy. The spokesperson is available for interview for interviews. And this is incredibly important these days. Uh, with the now with webinars and radio and television interviews, having a company spokesperson that is a good speaker with a lot of enthusiasm to share information will get your company in the news. And the company that does all, the company that does all of the above better than its competitors, that's going to be the company that's going to be in the news. Just talk to you about knowing why you need to determine your goals and and your audience. That be something that you have created uh, in your business or marketing plans. You've outlined and prioritized your target audiences and determine your expectations, your goals and objectives.
for communicating with your audiences through publicity. So what to accomplish? Is it that you want publicity to accomplish for your magazine or publication? Do you want to use the publicity to sell more products in magazines? Do you need to educate prospects about your product category and then about your particular product? Do you want to do publicity to influence public opinion so that people are more respective, receptive to your message, product, or service? Do you want to use publicity to establish your company spokesperson as an expert so that you can leverage that perceived expert status with your targeted audience? Do you want publicity to help your company recruit qualified employees? Key point for a company that employs, that has a constant need to be hiring new employees. Do you want the publicity to help shape your company's image in the community? Well, you can do all these things, and you may need it all, all of these things for your, your company. There's a few things I just wanted to note that, that Blissey cannot do. It can help you establish a reputation as a socially resp- responsible employer if you aren't one. We would hope, again, that publicity would be the tool, the basic information about the company, the hard facts. It can help you communicate that you care about your community if you don't. You absolutely must take steps, actions to get involved in the community if that's what you want to communicate. If you sell a product, if you haven't created any news value for that product, and I think that's a key word here. As we go through and talk about publicity through the webinars, let's think about the news value of our different pits and angles and how we want to to position the company. And it can't help you establish you as an expert if you're a phony. Bottom line, within reason, publicity can help you accomplish what you need to accomplish as long as you have something interesting to offer and as long as your company has some amount of integrity. Now, let's look at defining our audience, so audiences, because this is a very important step uh, and the very first step in developing an effective publicity plan, uh, publicity plan. A publicity plan is to define your audience. You can develop your media list. You can't your, select your tools and techniques you will use with your publicity plan without knowing who you need to reach. Many companies sell to multi-audiences, and there'd be different reasons that they would, to generate customers and referrals and more. And your audience might be internal to build up employee morale, management, to edit your board members, if they're appointed board members, to get your management excited about what the company's working on and what the company's forward motion is. Let's look at who could be our potential audience. And this is taken from using expert PR. And it, it's going to, we're going to look at a list of potential audiences. Some of these are really obvious. Some of, them, some of them are not obvious. And as we go down the list, you, you might pull up might be something, an, an area that an audience that you haven't thought of before that you need to reach through your publicity. So let's look at our different audiences um, that publicity can reach. It could be the academic community, and insurers, very important area, community groups, competitors, customers, deal and distributors, employees. It could be employee families, government representatives on the state federal levels, international customers, a huge, person, huge target audience might be investors, labor uni, un, unions, managers, and supervisors. Again, that would be more our internal 
publicity, online media, which is growing so rapidly in our, our sector of media outlets, print media, media, regulatory agencies, interest groups, stockholders. We know publicity is very important for stockholders and the image that you create uh, to your stockholders. Suppliers, media, temporary employees, trade associations. So going down this list, think in terms of publication, your company, how many of them does your publicity need to reach? Once we decided who our audience is, then we need to decide and publish reach our publicity goals. So publicity efforts will be much more effective and satisfying if you first establish well-defined goals. And as I mentioned earlier, when you look at your business and strategy uh, business and marketing strategies uh, plans for your companies, yes, that's what we're looking for. We we hope within those we have very well-defined goals, and we can then target publicity campaigns to help reach those goals. What is a goal? Well, it's a broad statement of direction that is determined by the needs of your organization and must be in line, very important, with the overall view of the company of management support. So, of course, that would be crucial in a publicity plan. We be sure that we are in line with the, the broad goal of the company the broad statement of direction. The company already have goals as part of its business plan or marketing plan, then it's very important that your publicity goals support them. In some cases, as I mentioned, they might be the same. Goals can be well-defined, but they're really not specific or measurable. They tell you what direction you want to go in, and let's some sample goals, and let's see if we can apply these to your own magazines and publications. So sat down, and we were meeting as a company. Let's say, okay, one of our goals, to generate target audience awareness of the quality of our company's products, the quality of our publications. We want to make sure that our target audience is aware of our quality of our products. We want to position our CEO among key audiences as an expert in our company's industry. We want to create, aware, create awareness of our company's commitment to the well-being of the community. And again, that's that visible but very important connection to the community that in return the community wants to be connected back to your company and be a part of what your company is doing. Introduce a product, XYZ, as the first of its kind and to communicate its unique attributes. Another important goal to a company would be to position our company as the most innovative in its field in a geographical region. So if anyone thought of this company in Texas, they would immediately think of your company or your magazine. In your city, they would immediately say the name of your magazine. Uh, for instance, Spikey Media, college publication, people would instantly think of study breaks. And then another sample goal of a publicity campaign would be to show potential employees that we provide a creative work environment. And I know in the publishing business, you want that really excited employees, you want those really creative talent, and publicity certainly can position you in the way that you can draw that talent in, and one, and then once you're using their talent, again, that will grow your, the awareness of your company with more publicity using talent. So once we decided our publicity goals and set our goals, then we have to think of how we're going to get there. So now, at establishing and reaching publicity objectives, 
an object how you're how you're going to get there. These are absolutely measurable targets set within a specific time frame. Objectives grow from goals to help determine progress towards these goals. They're very specific and detailed. For one, they're going to outline the expected accomplishment. Who will do the work to make sure the company succeeds with that accomplishment? When it will, when will it be finished? And how will you know the accomplishment has been achieved? I want to give you some examples um, of objectives. So let's say our goal might be to establish a system for sharing news and expertise with the trade media read by our target audience. Okay, looking at the sample objectives to reach this goal, and remember what we're doing is we're establishing a system for sharing our company's news with the trade media so we can read our target market audience. Start with day one, June one, June, June first. We have Jane Gray employee who will survey key customers by telephone to identify exactly what the trade magazines all they read. Within three weeks, Ms. Gray will research these magazines and go in and look at the regular features of the publications that include news announcements, and interviews with companies like yours. Then, within a month, employee will develop a grid that lists each Target magazine and the editorial opportunities for your company. And we'll be going in depth when we, divide, when we develop our media list, which will be another webinar in the future. We'll go into more... Um, specifics on how we are going to develop a grid and develop these uh, target publications. Now, Ms. Ray has developed a contact database of all the trade, target trade magazines that will be used to generate press release lists and record their text with these publications and the outcome. And this is literally to the publications and letting uh, record in this information grid uh, their responses, how they feel when she's contacted them, other company. And then within, that, and within six weeks, then great with others in the company to brainstorm what information her company can provide to these magazines, these trade outlets, and whether this, mag this information should be distributed through press releases or article idea suggestions. And again, we'll be talking about press releases and different ways of approaching the media for editorial placement. And finally, we are going to look at what's your strategy. Okay, so now we've defined our goals and our objectives, we develop a strategy for our publicity plan. Strategy, strategy is the big picture for how your company will proceed. As you view your company's audiences, goals, and objectives, ask yourself how you'll use this information to generate publicity and have your strategy in place. And I've given you just very few sample strategies, and maybe this is something we'll discuss during our Q&A. But let's look at our sample strategies. One, to leverage the president's outgoing person personality to secure more public exposure for your brand. Wonderful. To capitalize on the company's intellectual capital in a way that generates positive publicity. Strategy for a writer hoping to promote a nonfiction book could be to use excerpts from the book's content to generate sales and to generating media exposure. And let's say for a new florist, the strategy might be to call attention to the store's unique floral arrangements and other designs. 
audience's goals, objectives, and strategies are beginning components for a company's successful publicity plan. With these in place, you can begin thinking about publicity plan tactics, how to determine what's newsworthy in your organization, how to use that information to complete your publicity plan and achieve your publicity goals. And these will be the areas that future webinars will definitely address. Thank you so much for giving me this time to share uh, publicity and why it's important to a company. And I'd, I'd like to open it up now for any questions you might have. All right. Thank you, Jill. Uh, we have some questions that have come in. Uh, we have uh, four of them right now. So if anyone else does want any other ones, go ahead and just uh, type them in and I can see them come up. But for now, uh, First question, what is a minimum way to get started? Basically, if I were to do one or two things, what should they be? I think um, a minimum way to get started in publicity is, what I said before, it would be to define how your company is perceived in the public. How is the company perceived right now? And then, so just work on like your boilerplate or whatnot. Yeah, what, what well, about, yes, like, getting definitely. That would be your mission statement. Absolutely. Okay. For one thing, that would be um, you need to know your goal. That would be part of your goals. Would be your mission statement. For okay. the the very first step, though, is deciding what your needs are. Are you needing to promote sales? Mm -hmm. We have the why we're going to do the publicity. Is there special events? Overall, imaging of the company would be very important. So we basically uh, get that and then go through the avenues that um, you've mentioned? Yes, yes, okay. establish that. With the, the very very important thing would be how the company perceived and where do, what in the public and where do we need to, do, to meet our goals, where we want to be perceived and our objectives. Okay. okay. Second question. Uh, is it true that all, meaning good and bad publicity, is good publicity? I love that. I think that's a wonderful question. Um, I have something here that I thought was interesting. And um, um, I remember the show Friends. A restaurant reviewer wrote a bad article about Chef Monica's cooking on the TV comedy series Friends. And Rachel just assured Monica there's no such thing as bad press. Well, is that true? A lot of people believe it. They they say that getting your name out there in any form is better than never having any media exposure at all. And these people kind of theorize that people won't remember the context surrounding the exposure. They'll just remember what they've heard of you before, that they've heard of you before. Oh, I've seen the name of that magazine before. And others who are more cautious, and they disagree, believe that negative publicity hurts the company's image. You have to decide which camp you're in. Give it thought if you're, you know, we have you have to give it thought if you're planning a real aggressive publicity campaign, because at some point you might encounter a situation where your work is attacked. Um, I personally am a feel-good publicist, and I'm not a, a um, publicist when there's mad news. Say, uh, not a conflict, but when there's been a crisis. I'm not a crisis publicist, and I certainly, since I do mostly entertainment PR, would say that you only want favorable things said about your client. That be said, uh, if something on behalf of one of my clients, so let's say it's a band that I'm working with, has negative things written about it or negative review, and that's what these people are—they're reviewers. You just take it on the the chin, you cannot it. You cannot go back and ask them to correct it, or you cannot go and argue with the media. But if it's an incorrect information, or a fact's wrong, uh, or a fact is incorrect, many times the media would want you to come back and they would make a correction for you. So it depends on how your company feels about that. I feel that, that you would want to avoid bad publicity, and that not all good, all, not all publicity is good publicity that's for sure okay appreciate that uh, a couple more 
is it good to get a local P, like a local company to you know to yourself or whomever uh, for PR or does it not really matter? You know, um, when I mentioned starting on the local and then going regional and then national, uh, and then you look at the different cost if you use uh, a consultant or a public relations firm, I would recommend we would take in steps that perhaps regionally you would want to use a local or regional PR firm because they would be very connected to the regional media and have really good contacts and also would be able to identify the media that would be interested in your product, your company, whatever you're using as part of your publicity pitch. Uh, and then once you've grown bigger, then um, yeah, you might want to consider a national firm, and uh, especially if you had the money for that. I think that if you're going to work with, with a – when you work with a firm that has a good reputation, they're going to tell you – Look, this is only a regional campaign. Use a regional PR. We're going to give you a regional fee. It's unrealistic to think you can go suddenly into a national campaign unless you have some big celebrity attached to it. For goodness sakes, Harrison Ford attached to this. uh, Something maybe to um, correct this oil spill or help clean it up. Uh, If you have a big name attached to it, then immediately you could go to a national outlet. But you must use caution because you always want to make sure that the media would go, well, why are they coming to me with this? And the big name would bring you up nationally. Regionally, of course, they might go, oh, well, this is something my local readers or my viewers or my listeners could actually take an action on regionally. So it depends on um, you must be careful and start and build your buzz regionally, and then that very much supports going nationally. But if you have Harrison Ford attached or someone like that, you're nationally very big. For some of our niche publishers, it sounds like maybe starting regionally, locally is the best way then. Yeah, and and, um, so much for particular for publishing uh, and for magazines can be event-oriented, and that is such a great way to get involved with your community because it's such a feel-good way to – for your employees to give give back to the community, and that would absolutely be a local or regional campaign. Okay. Um, and just a quick question, when you say regional, like per city or just kind of in your area? Yeah, I say a local would be your city and regional would be your state. Okay. And, of course, right. I, I we're here in Texas, and we think we are the world, but <laughs> and we can get a lot of great publicity because – we have some one of, some of the larger cities in the United States are based down here, but sure. there's many times Chicago and New York and L.A. look down in Texas and go, oh, yeah, those people down there. But the other side of it, we can have industries that grow here that are just sustained, and their audience or their buyers or their the people that buy magazines are just local or regional, so they don't really need that national um, hit to be well-known and be very popular and be a successful entity in their own region. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. All right, uh, a couple more questions. Uh, what is a fair fee to pay uh, a PR company, and should you do it like a la carte or like a monthly fee? Or okay, I, yeah, I there should be definitely should be an option, and I think that before um, I heard you know, thousand dollars a month, uh, I think the most important thing, the way you determine the fee is the the publicity firm must sit with you and determine your goals. And then they, if it's a, a an um, established PR firm and they've done many campaigns, then they can tell you what sort of publicity effort um, would need to be taken if it's specific campaigns, and they'll have a sense of what kind of manpower hours on their end it would take. So it could be like um, many times a publicity campaign needs to be a minimum of three months for the results to come, and you magazine publishers know to even get in your editorial. Do you, do you, do you have any like monetary, just so we can get kind of a basis? What's fair? I think fair for uh, while. Sometimes if it's – what's interesting, if you have a long-time relationship with a publicity firm or have them on retainer, then you would hope they would give you a discounted – Monthly fee, but do you but like what 
hundred a month, five hundred a month, a thousand. It would a never. Month. I, it would have to be. I w- I wouldn't think that. Uh, I would say a thousand to fifteen hundred would absolutely be the minimum. Would be the minimum. Start I really. I, I don't think anything anything less than a thousand a month would ever. And, and what I, if you were to find a PR company that would be able to, like, you know, say you were a, a quarterly type magazine and you mm-hmm. wanted to do quarterly type of bursts for events that you had. What would be fair to say? Okay, hey, I want you to burst blah 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 for me. You know, do do what you do. What what would be a fair fee? I'm just trying to give people an idea yeah. of what what you know about what they could budget to to maybe try to try this out, just like as they were to try to buy an ad in a magazine. Exactly. It's so, I know it's bigger than that, but just just to get people started. Well, ads in magazines are very big. I, I, it's just so. No, 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 um, no, no, no. I mean, I meant for PR. I was just using that as an analogy. No, uh, for for PR, like if they were to to, to like not have a monthly retainer fee because it didn't make sense for their particular situation, just, or mm-hmm. if they didn't have the budget to necessarily do that, could somebody pay, um, you know, $500 or $100 or $1,000 or $2,000 or whatever it is to go ahead and, like, you know, get this out to the media? What's like a fair? one-off, uh-huh, like a one-off. Yeah, well, yeah, uh-huh. exactly. Say it's like a quarterly magazine and they didn't need a monthly. I mean, obviously it'd be good, but just say you're just starting out and, and you know, and with your magazine is tied to like an event or just the grand or or the launch of your magazine or oh, something yes. like that. Like what what would be a fair thing that people could budget for a fair amount? Well, I would say it'd be very fair, uh, two to three thousand dollars. But if it's going to be the launch of a magazine, even if it's quarterly, to engage the media, and we know that magazines have a longer lead time, monthlies and quarterlies, newspapers and weekly entertainment. Uh, publications which would be really in line where a magazine might get the publicity, do thing, and they would be recognized in a newspaper or a weekly. Well, we're looking at those publications at least three to five, six weeks. Mm-hmm. So you would have to uh, bring on your publicity uh, campaign, your firm, at gotcha. least eight weeks out. So you would be getting, you know, it would take eight weeks to generate and get that placement just to meet deadlines. Does that make sense? Did that your question? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. So okay. say two thousand dollars. I think if anyone did anything less than a thousand, it would be great. And and you know the the plus is this is a growing sector in business. So you might find some really enthusiastic new consultants that would be just an individual like me that would want to get the credit. Uh, and work for a lesser fee to get the credit of doing the campaign and placing the the and to have an opportunity to pitch the local media and to work yeah. with the company. So you, yeah. I think there's it's so um, you could so um, go back and forth and come up with the right amount of uh, the right fee that would fit your needs. That sh- okay. If they're not flexible, then they're probably not the right company f- for you. I think you could find the right company. Okay. Um, two more questions, um, and then we have a comment uh, to end things up here. Uh, one thing to you, Jill, I mean, I mean uh, let's see, what? who are some of the people they might know of that you do PR for? Oh, yeah, I um, have a corporate client, and it's called um, BMI, which is Broadcast Music Inc., and they uh, collect performance royalties for composers, songwriters, and creators. And I've been working for them um, for 15 years as a consultant. Um, they are a huge influence in in the test market, although they don't have um, an office here. Their main office is New York, L.A., Nashville, smaller offices, London, Anna. Uh, but they come here, and we do events here in Austin. So I'm doing events with them, which has been educational events, which then they brought me on, and we do South by Southwest music and media conference. And I'm their consultant for their showcases and panels. And they have a very big presence now in the Austin City Limits Music Festival. And we've been um, them PR support for their showcasing acts. So I've worked with many different kinds of artists and um, Public Enemy and Fave a Flave. I, I know y'all have really? heard of them. Yeah, I didn't they. Know that. B, yeah, BMI. Well, I through BMI. Well, 
Uh, we bring brought them, the, brought them in. Huh? I was going to say, bring them by. <laughs> well, be... they, when BMI, through BMI showcase and they brought them in, um, we had a one-off showcase um, down outside showcase in Austin, and it drew 20,000 people, double the amount. Uh, than anyone ever dreamed would come to a live free show outside during this huge music media event called South by Southwest. Other clients that I work with is a very groundbreaking healthcare organization, nonprofit called the Health Alliance for Austin Musicians, and serve more than 2,000 of Austin's low income uninsured working musicians. And we brought together some of our biggest health providers, which is almost unheard of, and these working musicians that contribute so much to our our city image and income, affordable health care, and actually save lives. So it's been a wonderful project to work, work, to be a part of. And our biggest partners and um, supporters are Whole Foods Market and Cirrus Logic, which is um, a a software and chip product producing company here in Austin. Okay. I also, yeah. I'm so sorry, though, no, and then, I mean, if you have someone else, go ahead. And then I, a recent Old Settlers Music Festival, which again is a regional festival that's 23 years old. And this year we had Patty Griffin as one of our headliners and uh, Alejandro Estevedo. And uh, it's a very well thought of music um, event. Uh, work for a band, Reckless Kelly, which is a roots rock, and they're national. So through their efforts and their national touring, we also go into every city, and we have friends in the media, editorial, all the dailies and weeklies and monthlies and T and radio. And many of my clients, we've had great success by going, setting up live entertainment on regional TV, in Houston, Austin, Dallas, San Antonio, because it's taking them out of just being considered music and takes them into being in front of an audience that might just be anyone that would tune into a, a Fox TV morning show. And suddenly they learn about a new band and can generate sales and of product and ticket sales. All right. Well, very good. Very impressive, by the way. Um uh, one just last comment to end things here, unless anybody wants to send in a last second question. I uh, let's see, it's a very helpful comment here. It says I'm a small fish and have someone on retainer for ten hours a month, and I negotiated a good rate because I committed to a year. So that's a, an idea. Of somebody and a lot of you guys are very similar sized companies, so it's very good to give advice like that. It's very much appreciated, which is why we definitely want to uh, encourage attendance so we can get comments like this that can just you know just help each other. Uh, that's what this is all about. So I do appreciate that comment as I think that will probably give some people some ideas to uh, get started because it's, it's, you know, we've been, we, we were a very small uh, company at one, one point and, uh, you know, you have to be creative. So uh, any and all suggestions like this are appreciated now and moving forward. May I add too, and also oh, any sure. comments about my presentation because I really appreciate everyone's time and interest, and this is absolutely the first time I've ever made a presentation like this. So it's been a wonderful experience for me, and I want to grow from it, so I certainly appreciate any input for next month's presentation um, that you have for me. I would like to just grow and make it more interesting. So thank you so much for your time and interest. Thank you very much, Jill. Great job, and uh, we'll look forward to it again in uh, four weeks. Thank you. And uh, obviously, our next week uh, we're going back to the uh, Ryan Dorn with online strategies. I um, don't know what he's talking about off the top of my head, but uh, you just be on the lookout for the emails, and uh, the topic will be there. All right, thank you very much, everybody, and I uh, hope everyone has a nice rest of your work day. Bye bye.